Hello and welcome to USCFootball.com TV. I'm your host, Ryan Abraham, and we are broadcasting live here on Ustream at Traditions on the USC campus. We have a very special guest, probably the most anticipated, but definitely the most anticipated guest we've had in the history, the short history of USCFootball.com TV. USC recruiting coordinator, defensive line coach, defensive coordinator, movie star, Coach yep. Ed Orgeron. What's going on, Coach? How you doing? What's up, Ryan? Thanks Great to be on the show, man. Yeah, Thank no, you. Thank you for coming out. It's great. Love it. Um, so how's everything going? Everything all right? Or? Everything's great, man. We're in spring ball. We're here at USC. Great atmosphere. It's great to be back at SC, a place that I really love. Now, you've, you've never been in here at Traditions before, huh? It's the like, first time. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's new. They only opened in August. Then, uh, but it's, it's pretty nice. They've been nice enough to let us do the show here. And I think all the coaches we brought in, they're like, I've never even seen this. This is pretty no cool. Question. All we know is Heritage Hall in the film room. <laughs> You guys are pretty busy over there. So. Yeah, we've been working hard this spring, no doubt. Okay. Uh, well, I just want to give people a little bit of background about you coaching. Uh, we have a mutual friend in Bruce Feldman who works right. at ESPN, and I think he got to know you really well when you started at Oregon, I mean, at Oregon, at Miami. Um, won some championships down there, yeah. ended up back at USC, some championships there. Yeah, we had some good years in Miami. We coached some really good players, really where I learned how to coach under Jimmy Johnson, and we had Warren Staff, Cortez Kenny, Russell Merrill. We had some great players there. Some big defensive linemen. Though, right? No question. That's where we learned how to coach great defensive linemen. At. And then when you came back, when you came to USC, uh, one of the first big recruits you got, Sean Cody, right? And he kind of exactly. started that tradition here as well. Yeah, you know, I learned how to coach and uh, recruit those great defensive linemen in Miami, and I knew that you could win national championships with great defensive linemen. So when I came to Los Angeles, it was a city like Miami, and I knew there were some great players. You look at Sean Cody, you look at Mike Patterson, Kenichi Udiza, Omar Nazel. Cedric Ellis, great players. Yeah, uh, well, you've kind of been known, you have this reputation, well, the, the voice everyone knows, but as a great recruiter. And I think that, that helped you land the head coaching job down at Ole Miss. It seems like a big thing. Well, every time I've had success recruiting, most of the years has been at USC, a place that I love. Yeah. USC, all you have to do is love what you do, work, be diligent, and you're going to get the great players. And then to help you down at Ole Miss, too. I mean, no it was a little course. different, right? Yeah, I did everything I could possibly over there, recruited some great classes. Think about this, in three years, we've put approximately 16 players in the NFL. Oh, yeah. So it was a great recruiting uh, learning tool for me here that I brought over there as a head coach, and it worked out pretty good. Now, a lot of people, if you have not read this book, uh, we mentioned Bruce Feldman, he wrote a book called Meat Market, which basically followed you around for about a year. And in all of the war room meetings, all the behind the closed door things, gives everyone a great insight. If you like college football recruiting, and this is an amazing book talking about everything that went on there. Was it a hard decision to let someone in that close and kind of expose what you guys do? Bruce Feldman was the only guy I would ever let, let in. He, he was really a good friend of mine, a guy that I trusted. And, you know, really, I go back to the book and look at some of the things that he wrote to remember some of the techniques that I use in recruiting. <laughs> very detailed, very smart, very loyal. In fact, we loved having him around. So it wasn't a bother for the other coaches to know a guy that's like a reporter is actually in the room when you're talking yeah. intimate details about kids that you might not say favorable things about. You know what, really, Bruce became friends with all the guys on the staff. We loved them. When he'd come in, everybody looked forward to him being there. He had terrific insight, great guy. Uh, now then, from that time, there was a, a big recruit that you got down there named Michael Orr, yeah. and then ended up being a movie made out of that, and you got to play yourself yeah. in the movie. What was that experience like? It was good. You know, one of my favorite parts of the movie is when I walked in, walked onto the set, the producers and the directors were shooting Sandra Bullock in the living room, and they all turned around and went, Shh, Coach O, fight on. They were all <laughs> graduates of the cinema school at USC. I was really proud of that, no question. That's pretty funny. Now, I have to confess, I've read the book. I haven't seen the movie. I need to see the movie. I want to see what your acting debut looked like. You want to get in some other movies or anything? Well, I need to stick to coaching. <laughs> but it was fun. I played myself. It was fun. It was a great story. I learned a lot about the parents of Michael Orr and what they did. And I thought it was just a fantastic story. Well done. Uh, sweet. Did you get to talk with any other SEC coaches down there? There's a bunch of coaches that were in there. Yeah, you know, uh, the uh, second day I was there, uh, Tommy Tupperdale was there, Phil Fulmer was there, Lou Holtz was there, some of the coaches really enjoyed being with him. Oh, great. Um, now, you kind of had a different road when you came back to USC. You went to Tennessee with Lane Kiffin, then after you, you guys you guys came here. Lane Kiffin kind of had a reputation there. There were some secondary violations and stuff going on. 
when you came to USC, he kind of said that they were going to have a different approach to recruiting. Yeah. It seems like they have. It seems like most everything, like people are keeping their nose clean. You don't have to make the big kind of splash where you're competing against no. the Alabamas or the Auburns. Right. At USC, it, I don't know, almost sells itself a little bit. It's, yeah. uh, you think the approach is a little different here than what you were at It's Tennessee? completely different. You know, we went in there and tried to make a splash and let everybody know we were going to be bullied around. But here at USC, USC was on top. When we left, they were on top. When we came or close to it. And all you have to do at USC is do your job, recruit with class, with dignity. That's what we've always done here, and that's what we're doing. How would you describe like your recruiting style? I mean, there, people clarify, say, oh, you're a good recruiter. They say Lane Kiffin's a good recruiter. What makes like a good recruiter? You know, everybody has their own style. You have to be yourself first. I'm really aggressive. I like to get to know everybody in the decision-making process. Get to know the coaches, be friends with everybody. And really, when you sell in USC, you sell the education, sell the NFL, sell the style of football. When they come to campus, they love it. So it's easy to recruit in USC. That's easy. Um, one of the things it seems like would help is almost like being a politician. You have to remember people's names. You have to know the kid, but you got to know their parents. You got to know all that stuff. That go, like you need Always. to know a lot about them. Call them by their first name. Be in constant contact with them. Get to know them. Get them feel at home. Answer their question. Let them know that you have everything they need for their son to succeed at USC, which we do. Um, there's a good story, and we've mentioned this a couple of times when I run into you. Uh, after that job, before you took the defensive line job at the New Orleans Saints, I actually ran into you right. down And this is what makes Coach Orgeron a good recruiter. He was actually the first coach I ever interviewed uh, at USC, which is kind of, that was nice. Of him. He was always nice. Um, and I run into him down there at, at Mobile, Alabama at the Senior right. Bowl. And uh, there was rumors around which job you're going to take. And I went to introduce myself. I'm like, hey, Coach O, I'm Ryan Abraham. And you were like, I remember you, Ryan. There's no problem. Ain't no question. And uh, Deshaun Jackson's family walks by by the hedges. And he's a kid that ended up going to Cal. And they were gushing over Coach George. Or like, no. he, did, he said no to you guys, but they still had such a strong bond with you. I mean, yeah. that just shows the kind of recruiting prowess you guys had. Yeah, I saw Deshaun the other day. We're really good friends. And I, let me clarify this. OK. Uh -huh. I left in December. Deshaun said no to USC in January. Oh, I wasn't sorry, here. Okay, sorry no, no, not really. He ended up a really good player, but we had a great great relationship with his parents. I think if I'd have stayed here, the story would have been different. It definitely would have been different. But it was, it's funny to see that they just glowed when they saw you kind of come by. It was like, oh, and, yeah. and you can understand how these I mean, you guys really have to become attached to these kids no while they're 17 years old. No question. Really become part of their family. Know the ins and outs of them. And, you know, I like to go in there and have fun with them. It's not all serious business, but I really like to tell them that, you know what, USC is the best place for you and show you why. Um, let's talk about the class of 2011. He's not allowed to talk about anything in class of 2012. Guys that aren't signed yet, but everyone that's signed for the class of 2011, we wanted to go over some of those. Before we get into the specific guys, were there any, like, really good stories that from that class of 2011? You got some some big-name guys to sign at the very last minute. I mean, like, seven guys on signing day. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, I love going to see Lamar Dawson in Kentucky. Uh -huh. We got to his house about 1230, 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, on the way, we almost wrecked twice in the ice. Almost... <laughs> we're backing out. I almost fell into the ditch. It was fun, but we had a we had a great trip. Great family. When we got there, the whole family was there. The coaching staff was there. What a great young man from a great family. Andre Walker. I really enjoyed recruiting him. Going to Glenville, Ohio, meeting his family. Hard to get guys out of there. Hard to get. You know, Big Andre is a fun guy. Six six, three sixty. Uh, big. <laughs> big guy and a great family. You know, just, I just enjoy meeting the families and. There's other great stories around, and I really think that we had an outstanding class, and a lot of them are going to have to contribute next year. Now, uh, Rivals ranked at the number four class, the top five class in the country. It's subjective, obviously, recruiting rankings. A lot of national re uh, college football guys would ask me the month or so before signing day, how many guys is USC going to get? And I really felt that, I mean, Lake Kiffin, you guys were pretty mum on the strategy, but everyone I talked to said, look, the number of offers that they're putting out there, it looks like they're not going to stop at 25. They're going to try to get early enrollees and, and sign a bigger class than normal. Because under Pete Carroll and you guys, mostly 18, 19, 20 exactly. guys. This year, 30 guys. I mean, it was a big class. Yeah. Well, you know, it took a lot of planning. And uh, uh, under the circumstances we are, we just operated within the guidelines. We had a plan A, plan B, whatever may happen. And we were, we were hoping for the best and the best happened. I'll tell you, having Pat Hayden, the athletic director, has really helped us. And J.K. McKay. Things on the upswing here at USC. 
Yeah, no, Pat Hayden seems to be pretty involved in all that stuff, so it's cool. He's a great um, guy. Well, let's get to some of these guys. We're talking about defensive linemen, so that's, you know, your passion there. Uh, Christian Hayward. Defensive, we had a question someone wrote in. He wanted to know about him and would he play defensive end or defensive tackle. Maybe yeah. talk about Christian a little bit. We're going to bring Christian in and play him at three technique. We okay. thought that he was very well coached. He, he's built for our scheme, extremely quick, recruited by Joe Barry. I expect him to come in and contribute right away. Uh, Joe Barry, so you mentioned him. We had him on the show before. He loved to talk about recruiting, too. He Excellent. seems like, even though an NFL guy, he seems to embrace the recruiting aspect. Excellent recruiting. Always working, always communicating, great evaluator. Great recruiter, he loves it. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, how about Greg Townsend Jr. out of Beverly Hills High School? You know, Greg Great came. There, huh? Yeah, Greg came to our camp, and uh, Greg was one of the better players we had seen in camp in a while. He's very tough, uh, very big. You know, he, his daddy was a great player. Greg wanted to come to USC from the get-go. A lot of teams wanted him, but at the end, we got him. We thought that he was going to come the whole time. He's another guy that's going to have to play his freshman year. And you see him at playing. He's going to play an end. He's going to play defensive Especially, end. it all depends what happens with Ormond. Orm, if Ormond comes back right now, we plan on him playing him at three technique. That oh. means that we have to have Greg Townsend or some young guy play it in for us. Okay. So that was actually one of the questions you had. Do you, you feel Armand Armstead is going to move back inside and play there? Yeah. If he's able to come back. Yeah, that's so. our plans right now. But he can play both. But right now, you know, losing Jarrell Casey, which we thought that kind of hurt us a little bit, and moving Armand inside would help us. Okay. Um, with Greg Townsend, he seemed like a pretty athletic guy. We, I saw him at the uh, Sarah Beverly Hills uh, playoff game. He caught like a 60-yard pass at tight end as well. I yeah. mean, you, when you're recruiting with guys like that, do you look for athleticism to play basketball or other positions? We on love offense? them to play basketball. We like them to move. One of the things that when I got here that lacked with the defensive line was the quickness that we had with the wild bus. We want, we're not looking for guys that are very heavy. We want guys that can move, that are quick, and can sack the quarterback. Okay. Um, one of those guys maybe can sack the quarterback, Antoine Woods, who was – I think he was the first commit yes. for the class of 2011 yeah. mm -hmm. for USC out of Taft High School. Yeah. What are some of his strengths? Well, he's big. You know, he kind of reminds me of Bernard Raleigh. Okay. Kind of a guy like that, like a big Bernard Raleigh inside. It's going to be a nose tackle. Great young man. Was a great recruiter for us. I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Uh, so he's definitely going to play an inside kind of There's guy. no question. He's a nose tackle. Now, is he a guy that you think can... Uh, is probably going to have to redshirt, or do you think he's a guy that could kind of come in and get right away, or do you need to like change his body around a little bit? Well, I think I think when he comes in, it depends what type of condition he's going to be in. Obviously, we have Christian Tupu coming back and Deshaun Harris, but we need another guy to step in in there in the rotation. That may be him. One good thing about the guys that were recruited, and I know you're going to allude to this, is this year we're going to have a rotation. I want to play at least eight guys to stay fresh throughout the game. That seems like what a lot of teams have been able to do. It wasn't something you guys could do a lot of last year, but it's almost like unless you do that, you're, the guys aren't going to stay fresh. You play like an Oregon, you got to get yeah. a rotation. You know, the game is so fast, it's so spread open, and all the screens, all the jail breaks, all the draws, all the pass rushes, you got to give you guys some breaks. Now, you got the recruit in the South. It seems like one of the trends, like maybe a lot of quarterbacks have come from the West. It seems like a lot of those big defensive linemen that are athletic have come from the South. Are you seeing a little bit more of that in California, or you got to have to look elsewhere, too? Well, we'll find the best players, but I will say this. California's been good to us. It was good the first time. There's a lot of players in Los Angeles. There's a lot of players in Northern California. We'll search the area first, then go out of state. Get some out-of-state guys. And, uh, yeah, but you guys got a lot of out-of-state guys in this last class. It was a big class, obviously. Yes. Uh, Steve Dillon was a guy that took a little delay in signing, but he eventually uh, signed in there. Some people weren't really thinking about him as much. He's a three-star guy out of Palmdale. I know Gerard Martinez, our guy, likes him a lot. Yeah. He can be one of those sleeper guys. Very quick. You know, a lot of guys that we've recruited here, we go off our own evaluation. And although we like the rankings and we like all this, we will. We think that Steve Dillon's one of the better players we've signed. He's extremely quick. He's strong. He has an attitude about himself. We don't know if he's going to play in or tackle right now. We're going to start him at defensive end and see what happens. Is it, the, the rankings are kind of funny. So if you go on Rivals.com, there's five-star, four-star, three-star. Pete Carroll, I, it almost seemed like if the guy was a three-star, they didn't want to recruit him at all. Obviously, this class was a bigger kind of thing. You had to get – but do you, is it kind of – is it more interesting when you see a guy that's a three-star maybe that, you know, we rank as a three – Rivals ranks a three-star, but you're like, I don't think – I think he's a four-star guy or higher. Yeah, well, well, we never look at the stars when we evaluate them. We evaluate each guy on tape 
as a staff, and then we decide if we're going to offer him or not, whether he's three, five, two. Now, it helps if a guy's five-star and we like him in our <laughs> rankings, obviously, but it will not stop us if a guy's a two-star and we really like him, we will still recruit him. You know, we have a saying, and it's in the meat market, we trust our own evaluations. Yeah. We don't go off of nobody else's evaluation but the people on our staff. Is there a lot of uh, talk amongst the staff, like if you see film on a kid, that one coach might really like him and one coach might not? Is there a debate going on? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah sometimes there are. And then obviously, Coach Lane Kiffin makes the final decision. He trusts a lot of guys on the staff's evaluation. For us, Ryan, to go out and see him in person in spring ball and to get him in camp, is a, it will be a great evaluation tool for us. I know that was a big thing under Pete Carroll, so it sounds like that's continuing on. You want to see those guys on campus in your own in person, camps, yeah. in our drills, we want to find out about the integrity, how hard they work, how tough they are. We want to see them move in our drills. Now you have to kind of balance that. It's almost like the NFL combine thing where you got game film where guys are in pads and actually playing football as opposed to running drills and stuff in shorts mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. t-shirts and stuff. Is there, I mean, you have to develop those drills that are trying to mimic what the real game would be as closely as possible? Or well, you know, all camps are teaching camps, obviously, and then we use them as evaluation, but they're teaching first. We started these camps, but we wanted to give back to the community and to the high school coaches the way we coach football. So whether a guy's a prospect or he's not a prospect, we're going to coach them all the same. Okay. Now, obviously, then we're going to look at the prospects and decide if they can play within our scheme. Mm -hmm. That's only one part of the evaluation. The next evaluation is to see them play in an actual game, okay. game type situation, see how hard they hit with pads on and stuff. The camp is not the only evaluation, but it's very important. How many games do you get to go out? Do you get to go out to a lot of games when you're. Uh, you get to see one game. One a week, basically. Well, well, yeah, but you get to see one game per player, so you have to be right on it. Now, if they're playing the playoffs in a contact period, you get to go see them then. So you really need to take your time and evaluate off the film in the game. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about a uh, kid. We actually went out for his uh, commitment when he committed Devontae Wilson, another uh, defensive end, probably defensive end guy, right? No question. Yeah. You know, he reminds me of Omar Nezo. Oh, really? Yeah, as you know, Omar was a great player for us. I think Devontae's actually a better athlete than Omar, and we're really looking forward to him doing some exciting things. You know, Nick Perry's one of these guys that's a junior, and we need to find somebody that's going to replace him so when he goes out as a senior, we need somebody to develop right behind him. Now, Wilson, uh, actually saw him this weekend. He was out at the, uh, the Nike camp at USC, which you can't talk about or you couldn't be there. Uh, looks like he probably needs to put a little bit of weight on, would you say? And it's okay because, we, you know, we have Nick there. Wes can play left and right. Uh, Devontae can develop, which is good. With our numbers, we're going to have to have some young guys that develop. We not, might not put them in right away. He might be one, he might not. We don't know. Okay. Uh, next guy at Edison High School, Charles Burks. A guy you guys tried to get in early. I guess Edison school system doesn't allow kids to graduate early. I'm not sure why that is or whatever. But uh, people have talked about him maybe playing fullback, linebacker. Do you see him as playing defensive line? Well, he had a lot of sacks. He can rush the passer. We need guys in the fourth quarter to rush the passer. I see him eventually being a rush in, maybe starting off at fullback, maybe starting off at linebacker but eventually growing into an outstanding pass rusher. We, uh, we saw him once, he played Servi. He was a little banged up though, but he, he still seemed like had a good motor and a pretty good game. I mean, a guy that just, I mean, he just seemed to be out there loving football. Like, a lo he just loved football. I think he's been to every practice so far. <laughs> you no, know, we, we there at 720, there's Charles. Yeah. So uh, he loves it, he can't wait to be here. He's very smart, tough. Uh, he, he's a good player. Um, J.R. Tavai is an interesting guy. We had a question someone wrote in uh, on the Peristyle. How did you guys discover a guy like that? Was he kind of a diamond in the rough? Or a, say was that? J.R. Tavai. Oh, yeah. Well, J.R. Tavai, another guy that came to camp. Monty Kiffin recruited him. We watched him on tape. The thing we liked about him, he kind of reminded me of the quickness that Mike Patterson had. Okay. The first step, the hips, the flexibility. Uh, we like, he played tailback. He played quarterback. Yeah. And uh, we, we, I really like this guy. I really think that he has the quickness to be an outstanding defensive lineman. Do you think he would play inside probably? or No he question. Play, he would be like an inside guy? I want quickness inside and speed, yes. He's an interesting guy because if you talk to some of the coaches in his league, like we talked to, uh, I can't remember the guy, it's Sarah, the coach's name, but uh, he was like, this is one of the best players we've ever played mm -hmm. against. But he just didn't seem to get the kind of attention that some of the other players. Yeah, for some reason he was a kind of an unknown, but we like those unknowns because they come here, they're hungry, and they want to prove themselves. 
All right. Well, that's an interesting class. Is there any other guys from the? I, mean, I can't think of any other defensive linemen, or is there someone, or anyone that you got to try and make a defensive lineman? I mean, you want to make a well, lot of defensive. Well, I'm going to try to. I'm always recruiting, <laughs> and I'm always looking at guys that are in a position to become defensive linemen. But for right now, that's it. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about the team right now. Uh, you guys had some really interesting off-season workouts. So if you don't know, uh, after the season ends. The team gets 15 practices in the spring where coaches can be out there. The key is they have coaches and footballs on the field. That's spring football, what we're seeing right now. But before that, Coach Osmus, who we had on last week, Aaron Osmus, the strength and conditioning coach, gets them for about eight hours a week. He usually works them out four days a week, uh, four days a week and can work out uh, movement stuff on the field and get in the weight room. But then it was interesting when the coaches could actually come out there and you can run them through, I think you call them team runs, with all these different drills, and you're out yeah. there yelling at them, doing the, I don't know what those crab rolls are. Yeah. What, what are those mm -hmm. called? That's all grass drills that we grass do. Drill. Yeah. <laughs> and they're very, they're very disciplined. We teach them discipline and to make them do things the right way. You know, a lot of times we lost three games by one play, and you never can know when that play is going to come. So we got to be disciplined from the first play all the way to the last, and that, that's what that drill's for. I'm telling you, a guy that's really come to our staff and brought a lot of great ideas is John Baxter. He's okay. a great, great coach. He brought that drill to us and has really taught us a lot. Now, yeah, he kind of runs that drill with you. I mean, you're the voice out there, obviously. Yeah. you got to yell. And John Baxter, you can hear him too. Yeah. But it's, it's, it seems like 10 minutes for the, your station. I don't know how long it is. Yeah. They're crawling around, stay off your knees, yeah. spin in and jump and diving everywhere. I mean, yeah. it looks like they're having fun, but it looks hard. It's something that we <laughs> want to break them down. We really want to break them down mentally, test their courage, test their team unity. We don't want them nagging at each other and stuff like that. If a guy's offside, the whole team has to come back. And the whole idea was to make him go through tough times so when we go through tough times and games, we can persevere and go through adversity. It seemed like the guys had a hard time the first couple workouts you did with that. Then they kind of started getting used to it a little they bit. They do. They do. They adjust. And just like a game, you know, they can say, hey, we've been through this before. Now we know what to do. Now, you get, there were eight new guys out there, uh, early enrollees. That was their first. I mean, you got some guys coming from junior college, but they never did anything along those lines. Did you see them kind of adjust? It took them a little longer? Or? It was a shock. <laughs> it was a shock to most of them, but you know, we got some pretty good players, some good guys. They went through it and now they know what to expect. Uh, yeah, I know uh, you see some guys kind of lose their lunch, so say, on the side a little no bit. No question. <laughs> That's expected. We're not doing our job if they don't lose their lunch. <laughs> It was fun. I remember seeing some of the new guys come. Even the big name guys like a Joe McKnight or whatever when they would get recruited. The guy you recruited actually at Old That's Miss. That's right. right yep. Um, but coming in and going through those workouts and just then they'll puke it on site. It just takes, it seems like it takes a little while, but it's something you don't do in high school or junior college. Well, they do it, but the speed and the intensity and the demands of which we do it is, is totally different. And then the competition is higher. Yeah. And most of these guys would have stud in their school. Yeah. And they come here and everybody's a stud. Right. So they got to compete harder, they got to push themselves harder. And that's what makes USC the best. At practice at USC, you're going to go against the best offense and defensive line in the country. You're going to go some of the best players in the country. That's what makes us great. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about spring football. So the big, I guess the big news coming out early is, instead of at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, spring ball at 7.20 in the yep. morning. Yeah, do you we like, like that? It. I love it. I'm an early morning guy. We get them early. I think it gives them the opportunity to come in totally focused. We get our work done. They go to class the rest of the day. They have actually more rest. It gives the coaches more time. We all like it. Do you think the players like it? or? I don't care if they do. <laughs> if it just makes us better, we're going to do it. And really, I think they do like it, and I do care. I said it in a <laughs> kind of way, but, you know, we're going to have to play better next year to get the USC football. And that's what it takes. That's what we're going to do. It seems like, I mean, you're still going to have, if you have to work 18 hours or whatever it is a day, you still got to work it out. But it does seem like you can kind of knock that out early. You guys are even doing meetings before practice. So it's, exactly. it's guys are up at 5, 4, 30, 5 o'clock. They're getting taped about 5, 5.15. Meeting starts at 6. But remember this, their day finishes at 10 o'clock with us. They have the rest of the day to go to school and relax, and they have an evening. When you practice in the evening, you're off at 6.30, you eat, eat supper, and then you go to study hall. Those guys are getting home at 10, 30, 11 at night. So that's the difference. It is a big difference. And you do a lot of those off-season workouts early in the morning, yeah. too. So it kind of goes along. I mean, you guys talk about doing that in the fall as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's Coach Kiffin's plan. You know, you look at the uh, the early off-season workouts are voluntary at certain times when you want to come in to work. Most of our guys choose to come in at 6. So they like doing it. They do want to get in early. Uh, the only... 
I mean, it seems like other teams are doing this as well. I know Oregon's doing it. Think, I think Alabama might have been doing it as well. But when you practice that early, is there an adjustment when you have to play like a night game, say at the Coliseum, where you're used to working out early and then you, you play yeah. the actual game later? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is an adjustment. I'm sure Coach Kiffin has thought that out ahead. But, but right now, you know, we're focused on spring ball. It's going great. The guys have a great attitude. Okay, let's talk about the defensive line right now. Uh, George Uko is a guy, red shirted last year. We got to see him in the offseason workouts. He was playing tight end and catching passes. He looked, I mean, he looked really good out there. You guys must be excited about him. Really, you know, when we got in here, we had two, or th two weeks to recruit. We knew George from Tennessee. We were recruiting him in Tennessee. I knew he was a good player. And we didn't go after many other guys because we didn't want to reach. Yeah. We wanted to get all type of guys. But he is a USC defensive lineman. He's a great young man. He's learning. I expect him down the road to be what we expect at USC. Okay. Uh, Nick Perry's a guy you also mentioned as well. I think Lane Kiffin gave him a lot of high praise. He's got a lot of speed. Well, a, a really athletic guy. Are you kind of expecting a lot out of him? You know, Nick can be an outstanding rusher for us. And uh, what he's done this spring is listen to what I'm telling him. His fundamentals are better. He's in better shape. Last year, you know, he got hurt right before camp ended and it hurt him towards the end of the season. He has to stay healthy. We need him to have a double-digit sack season in order for us to be great on defense. Uh, and then you guys got a couple guys back, uh, Wes Horton and Christian Tupo. Uh, they were just cleared for full contact, I think, this last mm -hmm. week, just the last practice drill, the yeah. first time we really saw them out. Yeah. They've been out practicing, yeah. but not like full contact drill. You know, Christian's the heart and soul of our football team. He's a great leader. We missed him last year. It helped him last year to be a, a year, a year with me, not play, learn the defensive scheme. He's very smart. We expect him to have a great year. Wes Hart led the defensive line in sacks last year. In this rush, he's getting better at his run fundamentals. He's going to be a junior. I'm happy about Wes and Christian being back. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly you guys got some talent there. Uh, Amar and Amstead, the guy we mentioned, what are your expectations for him? Do you think he's, I mean, he's just got cleared recently to run and do some lifting and stuff. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen with him. Obviously, uh, that's totally up to him and his family and the doctors. Yeah. And they gotta go through more tests, but me thinking positive, I totally expect him to play and be a great player. Um, and you talked about him playing inside, which would be interesting. But another inside guy that was kind of, I guess you could say he was forgotten in the, you know, before, Dejon Harris. I know, just when you came in, it seemed like it, he just turned a, turned a corner. You know, I think every time you, when, when you have a coaching change, Everybody starts with a clean slate, and they gave this guy a lot of opportunity. He's extremely quick, has good talent. You know, he has trouble sometimes being in condition and stuff. But I think last year he played pretty good. Uh, this year I'm going to work on his conditioning very hard. He's one of the more talented guys that we have. Um, so you guys lose Darrell Casey, but Christian Tupo seems like a guy that can kind of step in and fill that role. You talked about him being... You know, a leader out there. If you watch it, well, you can't watch spring football, but if you're out there, we put some videos up there. He's the guy after everyone's stretching. He's running the, the drill. Yeah. He's getting everybody yeah. fired up. Yeah. I mean, he seems like it's going to be, I don't know if he could completely take Jarrell Casey's place, but it's going to be pretty close. Yeah. You know, being a captain is an earned thing. The players respect Christian. He earns it by the way he works every day, the way he shows up, the way he goes to class. He's a Trojan through and through. I mean, this guy is a grown man. Loves football. I really think he's going to have a great year for us. But again, he came back to practice, a little rusty right now, yeah. working on some things. This is going to take all the way up to the season to get him ready. Okay. Uh, Claire, do we have any questions coming in? or We do have some questions? Okay. Sorry. Okay, Coach, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Sean Face, a viewer, wants to know, what does your prototypical D lineman look like, and what should his skill set be? Uh, you know, bite. All of them come in different shapes and sizes. The thing I look for is quick feet, hip flexibility, long arms, getting off of blocks, and I like them to play with a certain tenacity. Uh, you know, Mike Patterson was 5'11 and a half, probably our best lineman ever here, that when I was there, he was quick. Had great leverage. Sean Cody was an end, moved to tackle. You know, we just, they just come in all shapes and sizes. But the one thing I will say with the great defensive line that I coached, they all had heart and they loved the game. Okay, and Lance in Seattle wants to know, who do you think is the best player you've ever coached? You know, you got to look at Warren Sapp, 
And he's probably one of the top players I've been around. There's no question. Uh, Cortez Kennedy was a great player. Those are great linemen. You know, here at USC, we had a lot of great players. Troy Palomo, I didn't coach, but was one of the best Trojans I've been around. Mike Williams was a great player. We've been so fortunate to be around great players. I think overall, Sapp was the most dominant player. And USC Trojan 55 wants to know, who's the most improved D lineman so far this year? By far, George Uku. You know, he redshirted last year. He's coming along. He's really listening. Uh, we midway through spring ball, he's showing signs of being a great player. Okay. Oh, we're all good. Yeah, we got a couple more. Oh, one more. I'm yeah, sorry. we okay. got a couple more. Everybody okay, wants no to problem. talk That's to great. No, that's perfect. Keep them coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, viewer Polly Dad wants to know how do you like those early morning punishment runs? Say it again. How do you like morning, those yeah. early morning punishment runs? Oh, I love them. I love them. I, I, I don't like the guys to be a part of them, but it does show discipline. It shows accountability. And you can see that when we started the runs, the class misses were less, the tutorials were less. It's just part of being a Trojan. It gets me up. I'm always up, so I have somebody with me, so I like it. So those runs are if a guy is late for a meeting or something like that. If you get your name get on the list. With, they got to be with him at like 5 in the morning doing some ungodly thing. <laughs> you enjoy that. Though. Well, I don't enjoy that they have to be there all the time, yeah. but I really enjoy seeing the progress that some of the guys make. Once they come once or twice, they don't want to come back. <laughs> They're not late for a meeting again. Okay. okay, and Trojan Head 714 wants to know, any chance that Kennard moves from, back to D-end? I'm always recruiting Kennard. Just know that. Um, you know, really we moved him there because there was such a deficit at linebacker. I think there's always an outside chance that he moves back at defensive end. We just need to see what happens in order for us to put the best 11 on the field. Okay, and Bruce Feldman wants to know. Bruce Feldman, oh no. He's tuning in. <laughs> Do you miss fried chicken on a stick or bees barbecue more? I miss fried chicken on a stick, believe me. <laughs> you know, Coach Kiffin is on this big health kick, so we don't have any. We have turkey bacon in Galen Center. I don't like turkey bacon, so tell them. I miss the fried chicken on a stick, especially Fridays with him and Barney. Where was, where'd you get fried chicken on a stick? Where we was? bought them at the gas station, and Bruce was there. <laughs> and uh, that was kind of like a Friday morning tradition with my staff at Ole Miss. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and one more question. Um, what is the D-line doing to prepare for Oregon's spread offense this year? Well, you know, we need to develop more guys um, that can rotate in and out. And you know what? We have to tackle and put more pressure on the quarterback. There's some speed there, so we might have to play four guys with a lot of speed at one time, and they'll and able to chase those guys down. Uh, one of the follow-ups to that, someone posted, J.D. White from Washington, D.C., wanted to know, hey, first of all, I wanted to make sure you recovered from your illness. Are you okay? You were, I know you're on I'm, a, I'm about 90%. You're about and, 90%, uh, okay. And it, I'll, I'll say this to you. The last thing I wanted to do was limp into the Coliseum in my career. It uh, happened. It's over. We're going to be better for it this year. All right. Well, so he wanted to check on your – that's good Good prognosis there. Um, but he felt that the, the D-line energy maybe wasn't all the way up to snuff last year at times. What are you guys doing to ensure that all four quarters you'll be able to bring it this year? Develop that. we got to put guys in. That we, can, we can put guys in in the fourth quarter. Our guys got tired. You can see it on the film, which is no excuse. But we need to keep fresh guys in, rotate them in the first quarter. So when it comes down to the fourth quarter, we can get those sacks that we need them. Is that the one thing you would look at from last year? Is if you wanted to change one thing, it would be maybe just add a little more depth so you could rotate some more? Or? No question. Our pass rush was not nowhere near where it's supposed to be, especially in our two-minute drills. You look at it, we went three, two, three two-minute drills and win three more games. Yeah. So in that uh, two-minute drill to stop by sack fumble. So that is definitely a point of emphasis this spring. One last thing for me. We talked about the secondary kind of playing a little bit better. It looks like... Guys in, on a defense as a whole at spring ball, they're kind of more on the same page. It looks like it's a more cohesive unit. Do you think one year in the system has kind of helped the guys understand everything more? Yes, and it has helped us to understand the talent level that we have and put them in position to make plays where they can make them. We are working more on alignment, assignment, fundamentals, and tackling and getting back to USC football. Okay, well, Coach, are there any other things, Blair? I think we're good. Okay, well, we appreciate you spending all the time with us. I Thank know you, you. got to be out on the road recruiting and getting ready for early morning tomorrow. 
spring football. But thank you so much for joining us on USC Football. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coach L. All right, babe. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to be back in a minute or so. We're going to talk some more recruiting with the class of 2012 and 13, which he can't talk about. Gerard Martinez, USCFootball.com, National Recruiting Analyst. Stay tuned for that.